Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the land geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on today's roundtable podcast, we've got the nightcap meister, Scott Bossman. How are you, Scott? I am doing well, Mark. Thank you. And you? I'm great. I'm great. So too many people are confused about the dude buddy sort of esoteric nickname. So you are the nightcap meister. I think it's a good I like nickname. It. I know. It's yeah. a great nickname. Love it. Yeah. I got my robe right there. There it is. Speaking of great nicknames, we've got Eric, the technician Peterson. Eric, how you feeling, man? Doing all right. I got a good night's sleep finally last night, so that was good. Yeah, we're all dragging post boot camp, Orlando boot camp, except for Scott Todd, because he's only a little two hour drive, which is why the 2019 boot camps are as far from Florida as possible, simply to get back. It's Scott Todd, but we don't we don't want to start poking the bear yet, because we still have to introduce. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield. What's up, Tate? Good. I was surprised that there were some people uh, in Orlando that didn't know about the Notorious B.I.G. Wasn't that kind of shocking? It was shocking to me. It's, it's almost like people are just you shutting know, themselves off to some of the finest rap in the country. Justin Bieber can like get a billion views on a music video, but people don't know who the Notorious was. It's, it's sad. It's... You know, what do we do? It is. You know. we, this, we live in a we live in a post Malone period, man. A, a Scott, post Malone period. Look at Scott dropping. Look at Scott. Yeah, Scott's got two two teenagers. He knows what's going on. Speaking it. of uh, teenagers, we got Barrel and Aaron. Hey, Aaron hey. Williams, how are you, man? Well rested. You were missed in Orlando. But we did. Man, I missed you guys a few times. So you were there in spirit for sure. Awesome. Um, and then I feel very centered, very calm, very balanced when the Zen Master Mike Zano's on the podcast. Mike, how you feeling, man? I am doing really well. Excellent. It's great to be here. I feel pretty rested. I'm East Coast guy too, so it was just a quick. I watched a documentary on Robin Williams, by the way, phenomenal. If you haven't seen that, Inside His Mind, HBO did it. Insane, did incredible. It. You saw yeah. it? I did. Incredible. Yeah. It's sad, but it's uh, it's just crazy. But anyway, that that was just as long as my flight, so I'm rested. Well, that's great. That's great. Well, Tate and I are very bitter. Anyways, <laughs> speaking of bitter, you know him, you love him, Scott Todd from ScottTodd.net.net, LandMoto.com, and most importantly. Not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So you're okay for hazing you about your your little two hour jaunt? Listen, I'm, I'm well rested. I, I feel good. And uh, look, if you guys need to take it out on me, no problem. Because normally, like, I don't know, like three times out of the year, I'm the one that's exhausted, so I'm kind of like laughing like you guys now. Now you know how it feels. We're giving you three <laughs> hours. We're giving you the gift of time when you cross to our time zone. And then wow. life sucks it back away, man, with brutal force. Scott, yeah, you so you, yeah, then you, you get to complain to the family. Look how hard I worked this weekend. I got to sleep for two days. And you get two days off. And you do the same. You get the same now. Whatever. Let's just let's just start the round table. Bitter ball. For today. We're like the McLaughlin group. Eleanor. Gee, I think y'all swelling all. Scott Bossman, what was your biggest takeaway from Orlando Boot Camp? My biggest takeaway from Orlando Boot Camp. You, you know, I love it that boot camp just propels people forward into something better. So they may be <clears throat> um, mailing to a degree. And then uh, after boot camp, they're they're ready to take massive action with that. They may be marketing to a degree. After boot camp, they take massive action. So, it, and I think no matter where you are, it just it rejuvenates you, it uh, energizes you, uh, and no matter where you are in this business, it just 
I, I think it really does slingshot you forward into taking massive action. So that's what I love about it. I love it. I love it. The irascible Eric Peterson. Eric, what was your biggest takeaway? Well, I think um, <clears throat> after spending time with uh, many of the people there, um, you know, one thing I found myself talking a lot about with them was just kind of the, the idea of being diligent and finding a way to spend time on this business every day. Um, you know, if it's something that, that you're looking to grow and turn into a business, um, you know, I get it. You know, you've got other things to do and probably a, a job to work on and, and all that kind of stuff. But if you could find just a couple hours a day to devote to this, this land business, um, you know, you can see some dramatic growth over time. So um, we had lots of conversations about uh, those type of things. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we're excluding Bearland Aaron because he wasn't in Orlando. So Bearland Aaron, when you come to boot camp, what is your biggest takeaway? Well, actually first I'll tell you that this weekend I was channeling boot camp. I was getting the energy from all you guys um, cause I was thinking about, you know, what it's like at boot camp, and I was trying to remember some of those things and kind of revitalizing myself, even though I wasn't there. Um, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, there's just so much excitement coming back. Um, you are tired, but you're excited to try the new things that um, you've learned and put some things into place. Uh, like this weekend, you know, it snowed here a little bit. <laughs> And I was thinking, man, I wish I was in Orlando. But at the same time, um, you know, I decided to um, go back on some some things that I learned early on and at boot camp and through posting domination um, and kind of uh, revamp my posting strategy a little bit. And that, gave, you know, kind of gave me some excitement and that sort of thing. But those little things that you can work on when you come back, um, you know, a different way to do something that might, you know, go from making something be a struggle or just, you know, kind of going at a certain rate to then, you know, clicking in and really working well and that sort of thing. Th those are the awesome things that you usually bring home back home from boot camp. So um, those are my biggest takeaways usually. All right. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Zen master. Mike Zeno, what was your biggest takeaway? Honestly, I was really excited to see the um, success that both the coaching clients, but also the people inside the flight school were experiencing. And the way that it kind of played out too, because I talked, you know, to everybody at the boot camp, and there were a few people in the beginning who were just brand new uh, toolkit owners, right? So really just dove right in, got the toolkit, came to boot camp, and still probably in the back of their mind, or maybe not so much in the back of their mind, they even told me, they're like, yeah, we're here to see if this is real. Like, we're not really sure. They were kind of tentative, right? Really, you know, is this a real model? Is this real? And then to have talk with those people at the end of boot camp, and what happens is they are in that community of people that are there, they're networking, they, they listen to all the people, and these are real people having real successes. And at the end, like, they have this epiphany that, this is real, like, and they're, now they're excited. So the transformation that comes from someone who comes there, because, you know, we have such a diverse group of people, right? And some come there right after getting the toolkit, like they have like a week and they're there. And uh, all of a sudden, you know, they're wondering, well, is this real? And then that transformation that comes over them, because these are real people there, right? We do the grill the geeks. We have people just, you know, tell them uh, uh, stories. You know, you, you brought someone up and showed a, a website, how they just sold a piece of land in, you uh, in, from a, I think it was off a buyer's list or a neighbor up in uh, Colorado or something on the first day you brought someone up and these people literally uh, their mindset shifted like this is real impossible so I thought that was really uh, extraordinary and that's my biggest takeaway that you know it can really this can propel people to take massive action and actually change their lives when they see other people succeeding yeah yeah I mean one of our, one of our most popular segments is grill the geeks and we just get people who've been doing the business and they get grilled by the, uh, by the attendees. We don't, you know, it's just one of those organic. We grilled them this week too. This is yeah, like yeah, we did. good grilling. <laughs> it was great. And then, you know, you just never know what comes out of it, but ultimately what, what people see is like, you know, I can do this, that people are doing this and they're successful at it. And, um, 
it's and it's a lot of fun. Um, Big Papa. So my biggest takeaway wasn't necessarily a, a very good one. And what I mean by that is I learned that a lot of people don't value their time very much. We heard a lot of people who are spending their day doing two, three, five dollar an hour work, you know, scrubbing a list. And it's like, if you only have two hours to work on this business, why are you scrubbing a list? Outsource that. Spend that time working on marketing. So I guess if anything, what I learned is that I value my time very highly. And if there's anything in the business that I'm doing that doesn't necessarily help me make more money, then I need to outsource it and do it immediately. So that was my takeaway. Don't waste your own time. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. I, I, you know, during some of the networking hours, I was talking to people and they're like, you know, I want to do a a few deals myself first and, and then, you know, I'll, I'll get into flight school or, you know, go into one-on-one coaching. And, and I, it always kind of shake my head because Scott Todd's done over 700 deals. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself in, you know, just in Scott, what, three years? Uh, actually, by the time this comes out, I would have, it would have been four years since I ordered the investor tool picks. I ordered it on uh, October 28th, 2014. So we're coming up on four years now. Right, right. So it'd be, it'd be like, you know, going up, to the person that trained Bobby Flay and said, you know, I really like to cook and I think the food can taste good, but, uh, you know, I don't want to take a class with Bobby Flay, but, but you can have an opportunity to take a class with Bobby Flay. And if you just follow his recipe, you're going to have like this beautiful dish that comes out of passive income for the rest of your life. You just want to like go to the supermarket yourself and learn how to chop and, learn how to dice and maybe you under season, maybe you over season, you know, the, the dish comes out horrible. You lose a bunch of money on that dish. You go to another, you go back to another grocery store. You try it again. They're like, Oh wait, why don't I just have Bobby Flay teach me how to do it and just follow the recipe that, that mentality I don't get. And um, it's, it's interesting how, how people like Tate said, don't value their time or, or want to sort of kind of suffer through something when you have a, (laughs) you have this incredible opportunity and resource to just have this, you know, incredibly successful person show you and follow the recipe and and take you up the land investing mountain. There's no better Sherpa. I don't get it. Scott Todd. Why? Why? Why do people resist? You know what it looks like. Ah, man, I, I wish I knew. Like, there was one moment where uh, in, in uh, boot camp where, uh, you know, like, literally, I just wanted to hang my head in, like, not disappointment, but hang my head like I failed. Like, I as a teacher failed because someone asked, like, oh, man, I'm, and this is someone who went through flight school. They're like, oh, man, I'm overwhelmed with everything. I don't know where to start to to um, to kind of help get people to help me, like to to build a VA team. And at that point, I just felt like, and it wasn't just one person. You hear that all the time, or you see it. You just feel like, man, I didn't get that message across because, you know, when when I was trying to break free, when I was trying to get out of the corporate gig, if I would have spent my two hours a day like scrubbing a list or you know writing ads. I never would have broken free. What it took was, it took me getting that chump work, as I like to call it, get the chump work off your shoulder. So then what do I focus on? Well, I'm focusing on the, the high dollar stuff. I'm focusing on the, the sales and calling people back and following up with them. I'm focusing on, you know, like buying, and I even got buying off at one point, but essentially the stuff that, you know, that's the important stuff. I didn't let that fall and slip, but there's no way that you can break free and do two hours a day without more time. I mean, I may have been working two hours a day in my business to, to grow it, but I probably had 10 hours a day, eight to 10 hours a day of people doing work for me, right? So it's not about my two hours, which I think a lot of people think like, I, I hear you, I hear in the Grill the Geeks like, oh, how many hours are you working on this? Well, that's the wrong question if you ask me. The right question would be, 
How many hours are you working on this? And then how many hours a day do you have VAs working on this? Because ideally, if you could get to your own time is zero and have VAs doing all of the work, well, that is the ultimate in success to me. Right, right. I mean, Tate, you've done over 200 deals so far this year. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And how many hours a day are you working? I mean, some days I'm not working. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Yeah. So, you know, it might be, I have a feeling and Scott boss and Mike Zeno, you guys let me know. I have a feeling that when I'm talking to that person that says, Hey, I want to, I want to kind of do it myself first and prove it to myself first that it works. There's almost a fear of success because if you go into flight school and you don't follow the recipe, there's no other person to blame except yourself at that point. And so in a way you sort of, you, you let yourself off the hook by saying, well, you know, this or that. And, and then you don't, you, you, you ultimately bypass that fear, um, fear of failure and fear of success. Like it's just, it just didn't work for you. Right. Is that, is that fair? I think it's definitely fair. I think, uh, Fear is the major component for a lot of people in moving forward. Uh, they're not confident in themselves. They're not confident in the business. Uh, but, but that's like a, you know, as you always say, Mark, that, that's a big elephant to eat on your own, right? So, right. I mean, when you get the investor toolkit, and we always say this, there's no lack of information. The information is there. There's just an execution gap. And when you have Scott Todd, who's, there is your Sherpa able to help you execute that fear goes away. And that right there is worth your time investment and your capital investment uh, because you make, you, you save so much more time in the end and you, I mean uh, you get from point A to point B and making less mistakes. So I think it's fear of the unknown um, and, and fear of taking, taking the leap. Right. Right. Scott Todd, what do you, what do you think? You know, Mark, you, over the weekend, you gave, me a, uh, you gave me a book suggestion. It was The Courage to Be Disliked, right? And yeah. while I'm still listening to this book, and I love it, by the way. I think it's, I think it's great. I would tell you that in the, in the book, just based on what I've read so far, he talks about uh, the, the fact that you, you get the life that you want, right? Like, you know, you create the life that you want. And your past has no bearing on your future, it's the baggage that you bring to it. And, but ultimately, if you say like, well, that's not going to work for me or that didn't work for me, it's because you created the reality where it didn't work. And there's just so many people that you see out there doing deals, you know, that, that I got to tell you something. There's not, I, I mean, like, there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special about any of us that like, oh, well, we are the lucky ones and we look, no, what we did was we just do the job, right? Like we just do it. And then we created what we have. And it's crazy because I think that's what's cool about boot camp is what, when you get to boot camp, now you're not talking to you or to me or to anybody on this call. Now you're talking to other people who are doing deals and all they're doing is doing it, right? Like they're not doing anything special, but it's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's hard work. But if you just do the work, then you will have the success, but you're going to create the world that you want. Yeah. I love that. that that's such a good book. I actually bought that uh, for my son as well. He won't read it, but it's, it's in the house. You should, you should pay him. You should pay him to read books. Bribery. Yeah. But how am I, how am I going to know? Wait, book report. Report. Quiz and book, book book report. Report. Or he's got a, he's got a recite it back, not recite back, but he's got a, He's got to have a conversation with you about the book. So what do you think about this piece? What's your take on that? How much, how much would I pay? Better yet, out. have him write a, a full summary on the book for you, like, a, like an executive report, you know, kind of the, the main points of the book. Well, it's not a bad idea. I don't know why you guys are paying your kids to write books. <laughs> Go read a book. Hey, hey Mark, I will tell you. <laughs> There, there's a uh, there's an author I won't like there's there's an author out there that I I know, and uh, he he homeschools his kids, 
And he does that. Like he'll give them a list of books to, to kind of read and say, Hey, listen, if you read these books, I'll pay you $10 an hour, but they're books that he's chosen about business because he wants to give them a real education. So he, he actually will pay them based on kind of the, the, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, audible version. So if it's a six hour book, he'll even pay him to listen to the audible. So six hour book, I'll pay you $60. If you can tell me what your, your key takeaways here, three t- key t- takeaways. And he knows like, did you do it or not do it? It's not a bad idea. And then what All you right. do is you pay him with, you pay him with Amazon money, the fake Amazon money. Exactly. Exactly. That looked real. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're at that point now in the podcast where we get to put the Zen master on the spot, asking for his tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, maybe even a quote, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners. And Mike, I will say before you give your tip of the week, today's podcast is sponsored by none other than flight school. Want to learn the recipe? Want to have Bobby Flay teach you how to cook? Easy. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training, schedule a call with the nightcap meister. Might even teach you how to drink Jägermeister and help you help you get into land investing. Same thing with the Zen master, Mike Zeno. Anxious like me? Talk to Mike. Either one, you're going to come out with some, some great information. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and learn about flight school. Um, all right, Mike, what do you got? You're going to love this one, Mark. I know you are. But first of all, I had to say, I was looking up because I must be out of the loop. I, I thought you were saying Bobby Filet, but it's Bobby Flay. And he said, oh, I, I didn't get it. But I get it now. He's a, he's a big time uh, cook, chef. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, not everybody may know what you were saying. I didn't know. I had to look it up. Like, I had to look up Irascible over the weekend. I didn't even know what it was. Uh, no, no. I, I do have a thick Midwestern accent that a lot of people <laughs> – can't understand. <laughs> so a, a friend of mine recently, his son went to an Olympic training camp. And one of the things he told them there, I thought was magical. And I kind of, uh, I adapted a little bit what they said, but when you get up in the morning, like they would say, you know, it's not what you have to do. It's what you get to do. So I basically, what I'm saying, most people when they get up in the morning, they worry about what do I have to do today? They worry about it. So my idea is now you, you, you replace this worry about what you have to do and then celebrate what you get to do, especially in this business. Don't wake up and think, well, I, I have to go do my ad. I have to do what you get to do. This is a, we're blessed in this business with the ability. You just logged off. I thought you logged off. I'm like, you didn't like my, <laughs> you just disappeared for a second, Mark. I'm like, where'd he go? That threw me for a loop. <laughs> you disappeared. <Cool. laughs> I was like, is it that bad? <laughs> no, uh, it's so, so don't worry about what you have to do. Celebrate what you get to do and take those bold steps every day in this business. I love it. I love it. Eric Peterson, what did you get to do today? What did I get to do? Let's see. Um, create some automations for my intake manager. Nice. Nice. Scott Bossman, what did you get to do? Uh, I, was, I actually talked to Aaron about this this morning. On a Tuesday morning... When I was a little bit tired from boot camp, I did not have to set my alarm. And I must have been tired uh, because I slept all the way through till, you know, 8.15, which I'm usually up at 6.30. But it's just like beautiful knowing that uh, because of this, I'm able to not set my alarm some morning. I love it. I love it. Bearland Aaron, what did you get to do? Oh, you're on mute. Okay. Um, I got to play with Eric's Airtable base that he had mentioned on the last podcast. Um, really enjoying it because it's, it's like I said earlier, I'm working on uh, my posting strategy and it is kind of a little bit of a game changer in what I'm doing. So, and it's, it's a lot, actually a lot of fun to use. Um, he did a really nice job on it. So, um, I'm getting to play with Airtable. Nice. Nice. Well, you know what I love? I get, I love to get to hang out with all you guys, um, every week. 
and um, it's the best. It really is the best to have that those three W's work. You know where you want, when you want, but most importantly, with whom you want is uh, is really special. So I want to thank all the listeners. Hopefully, you're getting a lot of value from the podcasts. Please do us a favor subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of the review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit. And uh, are we ready to do this? Should Let's we- do it. All right. So we're go- are we going fast? Or are we going- fast. Nate, Nate, are you going to lead us? It's going to be like this. Do, do, do. Let freedom ring. Like that? Whoa. Whoa. You can handle it. You're big boys and girls. All right, ready? One, two, three. Let Let freedom 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 ring. 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 That was fast. (laughs) Let freedom ring. Gosh. You said fast. Uh, I did. I went one, two, three. No, that's not how fast you were. You were not. No, that's you went like this. You went let freedom Freedom ring. ring. That's slow as. Let freedom ring. That's what you got to do. Maybe we should just see how fast we can say it every week, get progressively faster until it's not audible anymore. I think, I think we achieved that today, Tate. Bailey and, er- <laughs> Bailey and Aaron just heard the word let. <laughs> that was it. My job is yeah. complete, Dad. He's got freedom right now. <laughs> freedom. Was, wasn't there an SNL skit about like the, the, the person that was like five seconds behind? Ring. Ring. There <laughs> it is. All right. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to go uh, honor my pretentious hard stop. Have a great one. Bye. Bye.